All right. Just got to update the old Cardboard Live deck list. Somewhere. There it is. All right. So today, we're back casting Thalia's for the first time in quite a while. Honestly, I hadn't been playing Thalia in Modern since I like was jamming a bunch of Black White. Uh, Eldrazi Blade, which was not a Thalia deck. I've been playing a lot of Bomberman Legacy, so uh, it's going to be my first four. I think last time I actually cast Thalia was like right before GP Atlanta, or no, the SCG before that, maybe. I played I played this deck. Maybe it was GP, right before GP Atlanta, I forget. But uh, a lot of things have changed in terms of uh, where the deck list wants to be, what's going on in the format. I guess what's going on in the format hasn't changed a whole lot, but uh, you know. Things are always shifting, adapting. I guess there's also, there's Mystic Sanctuary, so some things have changed. But this is my jumping off point for where I wanted to start messing around with, uh, with Death and Taxes. Uh, we have a couple new, a couple of new additions. Do you, do you mind? Do you mind? Excuse, excuse, excuse me. Thank you. Nope. But, uh, we have a couple new additions. Today we are playing... Two Charming Prince and Two Deafening Silence. Both of both of which I was uh, I was, uh, I was pretty excited for Death Deafening Silence. I think it's a nice sideboard card to have. Please stop drooling on my face. Uh, Charming Prince, I was a little ant on. I thought it would maybe like fill in some flex slots in some metas, uh, but reports have been coming in that it is a lot better than it seemed. So I just decided to give it a whirl. Um. Other than that, the list is pretty stock. We're playing Giver of Runes over Mom for reasons that have been explained hundreds and hundreds of times now. Please stop. Please, please, please stop. But yeah, we're playing Giver over Mom in the Brandon Six Plague Agent meta. Still pretty solid mana base. Karak three Karakas because we're uh, cutting Wisps and stuff. We're making our Depths match up softer for sure. Um, before these lists, I, I was playing like two Sarah Avengers. I think it was two Sarah Avenger, one Recruiter, and we had the fourth Giver uh, over, like, the Charming Prince's Nature Recruiter slots. But, uh, I don't know, Charming Prince seems like a pretty pretty nice card. The fact that it has more text than Flick Rose does in some, like, your combo matchups, like, Flick Rose begins Storm is like, oh, you have a 3-1. At least Charming Prince can, like, scry you into, like, more action. I think this sideboard might be a little too slanted towards beating unfair decks, too. Like, we have a bunch of bullshit against Storm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I guess nine's not like actually a huge amount against Storm. Like when the world is r all Rug Delver and you have six Rug Delver cards, maybe I want a seventh. But as I've said for a while, I don't think your Rug Delver matchup's like actually bad with this deck. Contrary to what some people may believe. So this is all. This is all mostly uh, like train of thought ideas for the deck list too. I wouldn't just like sleeve this up and register in, uh, in a legacy event tomorrow or something. This is definitely where I'm going to be starting to test with this list. So, um, let's get started. I don't, I never liked going to three moms or step moms or whatever, but I'm, I've seen, I've seen a lot of people doing it. Maybe, maybe I just need to go over my predisposition for wanting to play four moms in my deck. And we will jam. Oh no! Sounds like there's a dog. A dog coming in here. No, I kick the cat out if there's a dog in here. But anyway, also audio warning to anyone: if she starts barking, I will try to mute. But uh. I'm not super quick on the draw there, but if she gets too rowdy, we're gonna kick her, kick her back out. But trying another dog stream, eventually she'll get used to being in here. Hopefully, we haven't done this very much though. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it. Let's jam. Let's jam some taxes. Cat 
up, I do nothing a lot. Yeah, we haven't just played good old fashioned DT in like a month at least. Maybe a little less than a month. GP Atlanta and Syracuse, I think, were slightly less than a month ago. Ah, good, good start again to figure out a good Charming Prince is. Just cast a turn two on the draw and scry two. Is this hand a keep? This hand's like not garbage, right? Play my Grizzly Bears on two, scry two, wombo combo. I don't hate this hand. We're on the draw. We could probably mold a six, look for like what, Aether Vile Thalia. Stoneforge. You know, let's let's keep this hand. Let's find out. Let's for science. We got both we got both our new cards in the main deck in our hand. We gotta we gotta keep, right? Yeah, we're gonna top deck the vial anyway, it'll be fine. Well, it's it's fine, don't worry. Don't worry, chat, we're still fine here. Top deck the Thalia next turn. It's a weird looking vial, yeah, don't worry about it. Alright. Head set brainstorm. I hope that mean I hope that means that my opponent is bad, not that we're going to die. But basic island and inset brainstorm makes me think of like sneak. We're playing two Charming Prince. There should be also access to a deck list on screen in some fashion. Sneak still? Blue Red Delver? Just aggressive Brainstorm? But yeah, two Charming Princes in the main and two Deafening Silence in the sideboard are the, are the new toys. main deck card. I mean, it's definitely not a sideboard card. It's a main deck card or a don't play it card. And I I guess it is just over. And I uh, have not played it at all, so I wanted to know how good or bad it was. People were telling me it is better than they expected. Alright, well my hand is really bad against Grim Wolfmancer as it turns out. Alright, well that's something I can cast another Grim Wolfmancer. I'm into that. Lily is going ape shit. She likes the cat toy. She's currently destroying the cat toy. Hopefully they don't like daze this. Because we just like actually can't beat the Lawmancer. <laughs> two deafening sounds? Yeah, there are two deafening sounds on the sideboard. I think my sideboard might be a little bit too skewed towards combo card, too, towards anti combo cards, but I don't know. I wanted to try the new toys. I don't think that you can, like, play Deafening Silence. Maybe that lets you get away with uh, Cutting Chalice, but I don't know. I kind of like having both. Your Storm matchup's, like, not great in Storm. Why not four? That's so many! You only have 15 sideboard slots! Yep. I'm gonna play my uh, my Scry 2 Grizzly Bear here. Certainly not gonna play my uh, my Gray Ogre that is not Scry 2. Alright, we'll probably play Recruiter here. This seems like the best play. Find something to deal with this Lava Man. I have four cards in hand. What do we want? Like, Stoneforge is a really slow way to answer. Also, those not getting cast because they're gonna definitely fire up Wasteland. Revoker's like a fake answer. Uh, I don't really like any of these options to recruit for here. Guess maybe we just like play this sword. Maybe we just run the sword out and try like jam jamming the sword on things. I don't hate that. Opponent's like definitely not putting any pressure on us yet. 
Although, if this sword gets dazed, it sucks. But they didn't daze my two drop last turn. Easy Prince? I don't know about that. It's like, do I want to spend two mana to scry two? Like, my best bet is, like, trying to answer this Lava Mancer. And so, wow, Vantress Gargoyle. Opponent going deep. I guess the thing was just never, ever attacking, huh? I guess that is a good use for Vantress Gargoyle. Pitching it to Force of Will. Yeah, the PBDH special indeed. Wouldn't be surprised if like, this is the same list. Was he playing blue red? I thought he was playing like blue black or something. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong, I forget. We got like TN end here. Man, I missed this. Really missed having to actually care about the card Trinity Nemesis. Alright, so they have one card left in hand, but they have a really obnoxious Lava Mancer to deal with. An Aether Vial. Yeah, looks like it's probably a Charming Prince Aether Vial turn. I'm just gonna get eaten alive by this Lava Mancer so Prince like scries us towards like Plow or something. Something wrong with your mic. Oh no, that this that is a dog in the room. <laughs> uh well Thalia seems like an easy choice. Stoneforge finds us G which is a nothing. Like one card in hand. I think we're gonna top this. Put this file. Let's say go. Start to try to overload this Lava Mancer. We're at like a pretty cushy 18 here, so. If we can get an equipment going online, we should be okay. Better if we can like take down this Lava Mancer and just ice them with Prelate. The fact that they just like have Lava Mancer in their deck in 2019 is just the worst though, because it's just like. Beating us the fuck up. Let's probably just run out the stone forge, right? Ah, uh, this arcanist though. This arcanist is also just gonna gonna murder us, but we can't stop it because if we play the prelate on one, then they can just lava mancer down the prelate. And we can't, like, protect it with the, the Charming Prince until next turn. We're good. Uh, recruiter for a Giver of Runes, and then guaranteed, like, still have, or guarantee, we could at least try to still have a creature in play. And then next turn, if we draw a land, we can Violent Stoneforge, cat, play and equip Jite, and clear the Lava Mancer that way. That might actually be my best bet. Just, like, make three creatures. Hope they don't have a third removal spell. They're also, like, pretty choked on red here. So they don't necessarily have the ability to, like, bolt. And then also activate Lava Mancer. So it requ definitely requires a couple things going right. We have to, like, also just hit this land drop. Storm. Get two cards in their hand after that. If I'm like land plus bolt, they can clear my board. We can kill this Lava Mancer. We have a chance of still winning this game. And it's getting worse and worse. Three. Six. Lava Mancing. Uh, F Mike Firegun, 321, thanks for the follow, I appreciate it. Alright, 
Prince down. You can block the Arcanist with the Giver. Wow, not even clearing, just casting more cantrips. What's up, Potentia? So the problem is that we're still super dead to like days or force here. Uh, we can get a free block here, so we just take one less damage. Flicker Wisp not, not, wouldn't exactly be getting the job done here. Land? Not a land. In fact, pretty not good card to draw, as it turns out. I might just need to cast the Stoneforge Mystic. Use this Charming Prince to, like, save my Giver of Runes. Untap. Hopefully we draw the land next turn. I don't think we can afford to just Stoneforge cast GTA. I think we're just like super dead if that happens. What odd breed of modern are we playing today? Hey, like most of these cards are modern legal. All right, we we'll grab GTA here and we pass the turn. I suppose attacking with a repair is probably free, but... Yeah, opponent did not get the memo that you probably shouldn't be registering Grim Lava Mancer in the, the second half of 2019, but... You never know. Wow, did they brainstorm? And they didn't... Oh, they pondered. Yeah, Grimlock Monster has gotten a lot worse because Ren and Six exists. Grimlock Monster like, used to be like a, a reasonable card to run, but I think with the printing of Ren and Six, it's like kind of unplayable. Alright, so I'm saving this McGiver with Charming Prince. I think I want to give the give the Charming Prince pro red. I mean they could just have another bolt here. Been, it was literally game one, match one. And we've been kind of getting slaughtered. Um, maybe I give something that I don't care about as much as the 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, give the 1-2. Give something with less relevant. So if they want to use removal, they have to... They can... I still have my pro red thing. Sure, they can bolt whatever they want. Bolting the stone forge? Yeah, sure, whatever. Now. So I imagine they're going to Arcan Arcanist bolt my prince, right? We're really gonna rip this land. If we rip this land, we might actually still be able to live. It's definitely gonna be tight, and I'm not positive that the answer is still is, is yes, but. Giving it the old college try, certainly. I'm gonna take this up to three, because we're hoping that we hit the land and then we get to at least try to lock them out with Sanctum Prelate. Because the idea here is that we draw fourth land, play equip GJ to recruiter, hit them, ping the Grimlock Mancer and the Delver, and then Prelate on one, and then we get to live. Land? 
All right. Well, step one. Step two is the card in their hand doesn't do anything. I guess I probably could have uh, put... Pre I could have beat Spell Pierce. I should have just put the Prelate on one first, right? Deal. I don't think I want to take the Bait with this Giver. Prelate's already turning off the Arcanist from doing anything anyway. I just rather have another counter. We're getting more creatures onto the board regardless. I should have put it in Prelate uh, before I did any of that to beat Spell Pierce. Since the Lobmancer was already tapped. Die. Better equip your mom. Your opponent can't block the Delta with the mom equipped. They could have had, like, Vapor Snag. Then I get, like, super punished. But if I just, like, put the Prelate on one first, then I'm only losing to, like, really bad cards at that point. Like, just some random main deck Echoing Truth or some garbage. But I also wanted the Mom up to just be able to, like, block stuff still. Mitigate life loss. Yeah, these are just one threes. So this is fine. I just get to free kill this Arcanist with a double block, right? Tossing their Dreadheart Arcanist into the void here. That was a very good draw. I'll take it. getting absolutely dunked on for like that whole game <laughs> i think they just lose uh it doesn't really matter here I'll, I'll just do damage and ping it after damage it's the same as you as pumping right Short of main deck of braid, I think we actually win here. And now even not even main deck of braid because we have this flicker wisp to protect the GTA. <laughs> Can't cast that one drop opponent. Nice, got him. Beat the uh, Lava Mancer double Arcanist true name hand. Somehow. Alright, I'll take it. Alright, I think it's just these. This card sucks, right? Yeah, this card sucks. Um, cut these super slow cards. Put these revokers. And I guess Crusader just doesn't have a lot of text. Crusader has such little text that I might actually want like a singleton recruiter over it. Because recruiter can go like find Stoneforge or Prelate, both of which are like pretty big in this matchup. I wonder if that is actually something I want. It seems not unreasonable. I don't think Charming Prince was, like, the the crux of that game, but it certainly wasn't bad. Having just, like, a two-drop Flicker Wisp to, to help churn through their, like, 400 Lightning Bolts they cast. 
Well, this hand is very close to actually very good, but uh, obviously not keepable. All right, this hand's much better. Damn it, I want... All, I guess I don't want all this. I didn't even see the second ether vial. Definitely just put second vial to the bottom. If they counter the first one, it kind of sucks, but I think the rest of my hand is like pretty vital. So... Certainly more happy to have a recruiter in my hand than a mirror creator at this, at this stage. Sure. My opponent really likes casting Brainstorm on turn one. Might be a newer player. I should draw my camera down today so you, you guys can see Lily wandering around like an idiot. Not an idiot. She definitely is an idiot. Not an idiot. What do we got? Needle my aether vial. That's rude. Well, at least we put the second vial to the bottom. <laughs> I'm always judgmented if it like actually gets obnoxious, but given that we have three lands, it's probably not a huge deal. I'm into that. I'll just rush out and port them. They haven't been doing anything. They like just brain straight up brainstorm lock themselves. And then firing off the other end step brainstorm. Just because a card is an instant does not mean you have to cast it at instant speed. It's a good lesson to learn. They just like Arcanist me, we can plow it and port them. Young Peasy, unranked. We'll just plow that and port them. Drawing a lot of land, so it looks like we're probably not going to need to kill this Pithing Needle. Luckily, this is the turn that we can, we can like, Council Judgment around a daze. Uh, kind of sucks that we have to Judgment this Pyromancer. Considering they could easily have a True Dame sitting in their hand here. I don't think I just get to ignore it. Oh, that sucks. Should have cast it into turn, didn't you learn from the opponents? Uh, yeah, because if we cast Council Judgment, we can't board this turn. If they just turn around and cast your name, we're just up shit creek. But also, if we let them untap with the Young Power Answer, we are also up shit creek. So I imagine we just have to fire off this, this Judgment. I guess we also fire up his Aether Vial. Like, it's not getting better sitting in our hand, right? Maybe they'll daze it. Oh, that's rude. Force pitching the Vandress Gargoyle that they left in their deck against Death and Taxes. Sure. Again, turn four. Nowhere near <laughs> attack range. It's a random standard card, how can DNT be it? That is true. DNT is really bad at beating standard cards. Vandra Scargoyle seems like an easy cut for Death and Taxes. I wonder if that means... I wonder if the... If Vantress Gargoyle plus a Dreadhorde Archaeus means I should just board and rest in peace. Invalidates so many of their very, very many threats that they have in their deck. The two guards in hand. What are we doing here? Alright, well, 
I wanted to draw lands. I didn't want to draw nothing but lands for the entire game. Am I just like stone forging into a daze? Prelodon 1 does the same thing as Rip. I mean, Prelodon 1 doesn't beat Vantress Gargoyle. Lily. Um, maybe we want to recruit her for Prela and Prela one for the following turn. Like, we're going to get buried in that in the interim turn, though, is the issue. But, like, I don't think the Stoneforge is really going to stick around. They haven't cast any removal spells. Maybe we do have Chapter Recruiter plus Port. Recruiter for uh, Prela plus Port. This also does play around days. There's a card that could be in their hand. We've, like, played around days all game. Your chain is a thing. Go get it. Oh, we could get a Charming Prince. Although, if they just have Bolt, then we just look like a fucking idiot. So, probably not. Probably just gonna grab the old Prelate. If they were tapped out, I might actually consider Charming Prince. Although, that still plays into days, but... Certainly. Certainly a choice. I don't hate getting Prince, but I don't love it. Because it just, like... it Like, now we're just maximizing things we die to. Bolt and days. I think getting pummeled for a turn and hoping that they don't pummel me too badly and then trying to stick Prelate on one is a reasonable shot. Considering their board gets like pretty nerfed by Prelate on one if they don't go too crazy here. I don't really know why they played that Delver pre-combat, but okay. should have cast the end of turn. I'm sure if they could have, they would have. Uh, no blocks. Um, yeah, I guess we take both of these up. Not that it matters. I don't think this Pithing Needle is ever realistically leaving the board. Alright, cool. Another land. Just what we needed. Maybe they don't have Force of Will? Alright. Step two. Maybe they don't have a Braid? And then also we still need to deal with this Delver? stop playing taxes i mean did you see our game one our game one was awesome like this is just playing magic right sometimes you draw a bunch of lands like we're not like dead here it's really an unfavorable position but we were in a far more unfavorable position in game one and then we killed them what you got not a braid this looks like a braid This is definitely in a braid. Yes, actual dog is here. Which means the cat is not showing up. Fair enough, another brainstorm. Now we're probably dead. Super die. We could draw like Batter Skull and actually might actually still be in this game, right? But they have a million cards in hand. Uh, yeah, we're not blocking. Yeah, draw 
throw the cataclysm and just get him. So we wanted lands. Not quite that many, certainly. The recruiter looked a lot better than a uh, the mirror sayer would have in that spot. I think we're just running it back. I think all these cards still suck. Yeah, it's about right. Oh yeah, I was thinking about rest in peace because of Vantress Gargoyle. Probably not worth it. Vantress Gargoyle is just like unplayable. Like even without rest in peace, it's just like never attacking me until it's like it's just irrelevant. Especially when they're on the draw. Oh, this hand seems like gas. The old plow chalice combo. Better argument if trying to beat both Lava Mancer and Arcanist. Yeah, like the one of Lava Mancer. Like they probably have four Arcanists. It's probably a one of Lava Mancer and God knows how many Vantress Gargoyles they have. They've just pitched it to Force Will both times. <laughs> Imagine they'll just pitch it to Force Will again. Definitely just gonna go Vile into Chalice U though. Unless they go like Volcanic Delver, we might Wasteland plus Plow. But even then, Chalice sounds pretty good on that start. Still waiting for them to cast Vile, they have enough creatures. <laughs> They have a ton of creatures for the Delver deck. Maybe they're just playing like a bunch of wonky numbers, right? Two Young Pyros, three Arcanists, one Grim Mancer, one Vantress Gargoyle. Colonel Crab Cake, thanks for the two month resub. Appreciate the support. Enjoy your continued emote usage. Did you say DNT is the best stone for taking the current meta? Mm. No Maverick players have been unhappy. More unhappy than Death of Texas players. Stoneblade. Have not heard a lot from the Stoneblade people. Especially since like Miracles picked up again. Although, yeah, all, like all the blue white all the tundra players were moving to the mentor deck. So I can fix that in Discord chats. Yeah, the Gargoyle feels really weird in this deck. It's like a really bad Grimog Angler, I think, if you're not like actively trying to feed it. What do they do with their Ponder? They did not shuffle. Just gonna win mostly in this Chalice of the Void. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna win mostly in this Chalice of the Void. Lock my hand out of half the cards in it. If they don't Dazer Force it. Pitch the Vantress Gargoyle. Oh, nice. Pitch the Trinian. That's way better. Alright, well, two for one, and we get to keep the cards in our hand now. Yeah, that was, I think that was the PVDH list. The, the blue black one. Yeah, it was mostly a meme, though. Like, the guy was not interested in actually playing Vander's Gargoyle. He explicitly, like, called it unplayable and then, like, played it in a league for fun. It's happened to 5 0. Are we. Braiding my file. Perfect. Man, this game's going down great for me. Force the Chalice, the two one-drops hand, pitching the true name. Upgrade the Vile and have second Vile in hand. Now the question is, I guess we play the GT first, because we'd rather get the second Vile dazed with the amount of lands that we have. We'll find a creature eventually, probably. I 
his last words up. Wow. Uh, ambitious. Guess my opponent is practicing for a paper event? That would explain some of their decisions. Yes, I would imagine that they're mirroring their real deck. And that they are newer to the Legacy format. That would certainly explain some of their choices. Famous last words indeed. Am I supposed to plow this Delver? It's like, not that threatening. Might want to save it for like something scary. They only have two cards in hand. They didn't just cast it. I mean, Plot doesn't do anything. That's true name. But they probably would have fired off Arcanist or Young Pyro over playing Stilver here, right? Or just played them both and like just shocked it in. Probably worthwhile to plow this. I guess they're our GTA. I don't know. I'm kind of concerned about like just getting Arcanist. Did we, I think we can take some knocks from this Delver before I commit to this source of plowshares. Yeah, Goyth's great right now. Used to be the la used to be long time ago was great, and then became the laughing stock of Legacy, and now it's great again. So there's a bolt we have to be on the lookout for. Huh. I wonder if I just want to Stoneforge for Batter School and just cast it on five. So we don't have to decide yet. I can just file this in. One day Werebear will shine again. Poor Werebear. We could just file in Stoneforge, cast the Sword of Fire and Ice, and just... That's probably wrong. Unless they go, like, land a true name here. Although, then that would incentivize them to tap out, and we might actually get to connect with the Stoneforge. I think we're still just taking the Nox here. Maybe not. Because we might tap out for Batterfall next turn. Yeah. Let's kill this. Plow EOT. I want them to... Wow. Oh, wow. Force the Shrinomy in. Hot deal. Kind of wanted them to incentivize them to, like, play to the board more by plowing then. Like, force them to play another thing. Yeah, we got to plow a TN in. I'm in. All right. Yeah, I'm definitely going... They have two cards in. One of them's a bolt. I'm definitely just going to grab Batter Skull here. Since my stone board is just dead. Bolt it before the trigger resolves. Do it. They always do it. Could I get stifled? Man. I would definitely be got. Leave this vial on two. We have a lot of twos in the deck. Like that one. Catch you later, Lingmeister. Um, I don't think I really care about equipping the Charming Prince, so I think we just pass. We can either scry to or gain three life, depending on like what's going on at the end of the turn. It's probably the scry too, since we just want to feed the Gta to burn through removal spells. Also, we can scry to into our fifth land for this Batter Skull. Prince certainly looking better than like the average two drop I could have drawn here because it does something. If it if like if a if it dies, it will at least help replace itself. Hey, stop that. For eleven, yeah, I don't think we're gaining life. Bolt with the 
trigger on the stack. Cool. Thanks for making my decision easier to make. Now we're definitely going to aggressively scry into the fifth lane because we can't equip. Oh, well, that was easy. Bottom, top. Untap. Don't tick up. Hopefully the last card is not Daze. Alright, good, good start. Well, a braid, land true name, things I'm concerned about. But they have a lot of creatures, and they've already pitched two true names. No! No! Just play it at Arcanist. Fuck. Okay, we're just going like that as Delver. Any creature. Oh, dead word eight. We can just draw any creature and be completely in this game. Like that one. Um, I guess technically we can activate the vial. I don't know if it ever matters, but it certainly doesn't not. I guess that they could like unsummon it. They have like vapor snag when I feel like an idiot. Right. Definitely should have just cast it. Sit. But they could draw like bolts and stuff. Sit. Get me. If they attack, am I supposed to block? Okay, they drew a land, so definitely not. <laughs> I will definitely attack into their block, though. Oh, nice. That was just about the best draw we could have. I will attack you. Good block. Respect that block. Put it on two? No, fuck that. We're definitely putting it on one. They've cast two of raids this game. <laughs> Like, I guess we could protect with the pearls already protected from, like, lightning bolts. But, like, they really have the third of raid versus, like, turning off their cantrips into, like, true name. Probably doesn't even. I, I was gonna ping it off anyway. If it didn't block. Just gonna like top deck the third braid, make me look like a fool. That's a pretty good draw. Cast Council's Judgment to Flex. <laughs> that would be extremely funny. Just don't get any into fights with the other cat. No, they get into like just little cat skirmishes. They smack at each other, but they, they get along. They're dead on board, and we have a removal spell. We did it! It's Pearl Legendary. Pearl does not, or otherwise we definitely would have played that Krakus. Yeah, one of those. Definitely, uh... Requesting Feast is Legendary went out, Prelate. Good point. It's not THE Sanctum Prelate. Do you guys sometimes they fight over food? No, I think we're we're think the dog might be stealing cat's food, but uh, we're not positive on that one. And if so, that is a recent occurrence, and it's because cat just isn't eating as much. Um, how greedy is his hand? Very marginally. Kind of into this. A 
What's the worst that could happen? Hey, it was off. We did it. Step two is they're not an abrupt decay deck. Uh, looks like Rug Delver. Guess I'm just supposed to just fire off the wasteland on this trap here. Could also just port. Don't think we're casting a creature. Wastelanding is like the same as porting, right? They could fire up a Brainstorm if they really wanted to flip their Delver or hit more land drops. This plays around Stifle better, getting the Wasteland out now before they have mana up. Nice. Never flips. How much does my opponent respect Giver of Runes? Oh, never mind, they can have a Bolt up. Oh, never mind. Also, this means that they're pretty starved on mana because it's their only land. Bottom, bottom. Let me port you to death. Top, bottom. Alright, they found a land. Wow, no respect for the giver of runes. Should have just activated it and put the fear of God in them. Slam them again. Hell yeah. Kapow. Fuck off, fire eyelid. This Delver's not flipping because they put a land up. Oh no, they drew the card. Their current top card is unknown. They didn't top top. Flips off force. Alright, well, I don't think I'm casting a spell very soon, so. I'm just gonna batter. I think I'm just gonna batter skull here. Kind of want them to. Kind of want to force them to answer my Stoneforge Mystic. Because then we get to like start porting down their uh, Scalding Turn, their only land here. Obviously, if they don't answer it, then we get batter skull, which is also great. So this means they have to like fetch bolt. Yep. And then we get to port, take up a three, Crusader. Into like Jailer. Oh man. It's a good draw, too. I'm into all these cards. Well, I guess they have Force of Well, so Plow's not great. Maybe we can bait the plot, bait the Force at some point. Wow, no respect for Flicker Wisp either? My opponent just does not respect Aether Vile at all. You have 60 life. What? I don't even have... You don't know how to think, opponent. So we're firing this would maybe have an easy street if we untapped and then put it into play and stuff, right? There's also no guarantee my, my opponent fires off the bolt there. Accidental. It's really hard to accidentally concede. You have to, like, right-click, click concede, and then there's, like, another window that's like, are you sure you want to concede or whatever. Just like snap concession to activating my vial on three, which is a little unusual, but whatever. Yeah, so 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 yeah, sort of fire isn't force a bolt the same way Skull does exactly. We just we wanted them to fetch bolt because we were just going to port them down on their only land there because they have like ninety lands in their deck. So at that point they had they done four, so they had like fifteen draws to like continue playing magic. Um, so this looks fine. Cut like one Crusader. Maybe we got the Prelate. <laughs> where, where the Squawks at? We're not playing any Squawks today. I wanted to try out Charming Prince. I think Squawks is enough two drops in it. I don't think Squawks is a Charming Prince deck. Sucks you can't see opponent's tilt on MGO. Sometimes you can. 
It's called the chat box, and it gets really funny. Because the only people that, like, tilt off are, like, the people that really go off in chat, and then it's really amusing. I always feel really awkward when people, like, salt off in paper, because, like, it's just, you're right in front of them. Like, what, what, what am I supposed to do? Just please sign my max slip so I can leave. But a motive, just, like, you just move on with your life. It's great. Just get to laugh at them. Um, what am I cutting here? I think cutting the... Uh, yeah, if you're, like, a buy... If, you, if you're not directly dealing with them, it's it's, it's usually more amusing. Or if you're dealing with them through, like, a the, the filter of online client... Going to GP Italy? Heck no. I don't know how expensive flights to Italy are, but I imagine very. Yeah, people tilting right in front of you gets real awkward. Uh, at Eternal week Weekend last year, uh, really? we're, we're going to keep this hand. This hand's a little loose, but uh, we're going to keep it. But yeah, at, at Eternal Weekend last year, I sat next to the, these two people that were apparently like, like, pretty like big names in the vintage community and like they were like livid with each other and were like basically shouting and it was so uncomfortable it just like sometimes there's interactions between even if you're a bystander like there were one table down for me and it was just the worst experience it's a thousand dollars yeah we are not flying to italy i mean i would have said we're not flying to italy like regardless of the number that you said but that's a lot of money <laughs> You're for Boeing, what a, don't you like a flight benefits? I don't know, because I'm a bottom of the totem, totem pole nobody. Um, what do they do with their ponder? Ah, oh, they shuffled with it. <laughs> God. I don't think wasteland. I don't think I like the wasteland decision there. If we had a third land, I think I would snap it off. But you gonna rend me, Tarmogoyf? All right. Hopefully, we can be a daze with this plow. And then just Woodmill Sam rest in peace. Yes, perfect. Nah, they also have the force. Yeah, we tried. I mean, we still also have this path for the Tarmogoyf, so we're still okay. All right, chat. Are we double wastelanding my opponent? Wait, we know they have... Wait, did they trap Volk to cast the Tarmogoyf? Ah, oh, fuck, I don't remember. Um, cast Plow, returns Volk, plays Volk again, yeah. I'm pretty sure we're just wastelanding them the path double waste combo. Hey, path's a lot better when your opponent doesn't have basics. Kapow. Kapow. Path. Wow, that is an aggressive lightning bolt, sir or ma'am. Path in their upkeep, I guess. Play around, like, random bullshit force of negation. Or them having a bullshit basic. I would path first. I wanted to not get dazed, right? Nice, just the snap concession there. In case they force. Oh. Uh, they have, like, second force. As for, la, force and blue card is last cards in their hand. I guess then we were, like, pretty fucked. 
kind of want to just wasteland them into next week. Second forcible blue card last year, first hand is like a little bit ambitious. Crush and Delver players, as you do with this deck. Oh god. I mean, I don't think that was a show against why Goyf is bad, right? It was just like they had a creature and they had two lands and then we killed their creature and killed their lands and then they lost. Like, they could have had a Delver there and, like, they're still losing that game because the beat just put them to zero mana sources. They just, like, have big gun beaters. It's just, like, a thing the Delver wants. Undercosted beaters. Obviously, they had cast, like, a Ren instead of a Goyf there. We're, like, pretty in the shit, but... They can't always have, they can't play like seven red and sixes, right? And sometimes you play against like Storm. Where your red and six just doesn't have text. Snapkeep. Snap keep gonna get ad nauseum tendrils. Get gonna get dumpstered. Hopefully my opponent has a lot of non basics. Get bonus rounded, please no. Alright, this is not this is not an unfair land. I guess it could be. It could be blue black or red black reanimator. I spoke too soon. Yeah, it's definitely red black grand mirror. I spoke way too soon. My first thought was always Death Shadow as he marched left for some reason. But yeah, we seem pretty fucked here. Hopefully they don't just like pedal kill me. And we can like wasteland hold up a plow and pray that that's good enough. Top deck of Thalia. Mardu Blade. Oh no, yeah, we're just getting turned on over ended. Sure. Turn on Grizzle Branded with a nice backup, sure. First thought with Marsh Slash is questionably playable modern deck. That's also fair. Yeah, it's our obviously Mardu Reanimator Blade. It's a problem with Field of Den Standard. Just, I mean, just the mirror is the the best the the worst ma the worst matchup for the Field of the Dead deck is the mirror. And the mirror all takes like a million years. All the rounds went like twenty minutes into time at the the tournament last week. What are we what are we also making on turn one here? An ash rider. That's not bad. Certainly not bad. What we topped at Caracas into Swords of Plowshares? Is that the plan? Caracas. Caracas. All right, good. Step one. I think I'm supposed to wasteland them though. We're at 16. We just want to prevent them from like flashing back this looting. And just like prevent them from hitting as many land drops as possible. Yeah, I should not have. Wait, I mean, we don't have guaranteed jailer here. We don't have like a recruiter. That's why I hate playing DT or Maverick. They always find it. Alright, what you got here? Thought sees me, maybe? 
Wait, they'd be going to, like, one. Seems ambitious. But yeah, we could just kill them. We're, we're winning on life totals. They could just die to a creature. Oh, they do. Oh. That's pretty good. Because they can flash back the therapy pop the Caracas if they have another reanimate for the Grizzle Brand. But we're going to put them down to one mana. And they are probably going to take the Stone Forge here, which means the Flickmorris might actually just be lethal. Because this is taking up to two, then they make Grizzle Brand, then this takes up to three and might actually just be able to kill them. Oh no, they're going to take both. Duh. I forgot they're flashing back. Never mind. Don't mind me. But like, if we top it with Thalway here, it's just like bananas. Well, you got a sack. Kills with Caracas, right? Plow. Plow would not be a good top deck at this point. Oh, they left me with the land for a turn. It's not unreasonable. Love to draw like a two drop here. Eh, that's lethal through a uh, Grizzle Brand. Let us wasteland their bad lands. want to hit me and then therapy kill the Caracas. Just want to like, put me to 12. If they don't make the Grizzlebrand this turn, then they do just die to the Crusader, though. Unless they exile the Vile. But then, like, how are they winning? Are they going like, to reanimate the Ashen Rider again? Seems like kind of an ambitious play. Oh, they are going for the Vile. All right. Do they have, like, land second reanimate spell? And then they're going to make the Ashen Rider again kill the Vile? Or kill the Crocus on the other way around? To play my I mean you don't have to be here early, right? You can you can pay for it ahead of time or whatever. Do they have land reanimate? Ooh, pedal reanimate. So pedal wait, what? They gotta cast an unmask? Flashback looting, okay. I gotcha. No, they only drew they only drew seven. They cast reanimate, not a two drop. So they only drew seven. That's that's why we're not dead here. <laughs> Draw fourteen is a, a high percentage chance to kill you. Yes. Draw seven is less so. When you top deck the Crocus, at least. We were still like pretty dead if we didn't top deck exactly this. Oh, I never fidgeted with this window. Moto resized my window. Ah, oh, fuck. Found land plus reanimate spell. Aw, oh, beans. Yeah, I would definitely not say that they have an awful DNT matchup. I would not hesitate to say that I'm unfavored in this matchup. Wait, do I have priority? Oh, fucking. Moto, did I ask you to pop out the graveyard? Sub 20% chance we're over here. Uh, rip land, 8, land, 4, yeah. So it'd have to be like land plow. Alright. That probably doesn't do it. Land, 8. Draw land, 4. Alright, we could still do something. I don't think I'm on a wasteland then though. We can't do anything anyway. I mean if they draw a two drop reanimate anyway, spell and bring back the other brand, we're super dead, but I think we need our mana sources to have any chance of winning this game. So now it's zero. Yeah, we're dead now. 
Wait, yes. Yeah, two two white swords in a row, please. All right, we try to give the old college try. Does not always work out. All right, let's cut all these bad cards. Probably cut the givers. Recruiter doesn't get anything, right? Because we don't have a containment priest. Gets like a bunch of medium stuff. Bring in 13 cards. I mean, all of these cards are just like four other matchups that happen to have some text. Like, Chalice of the Void is not like a super good red black card, but you bring it in because it's better than just like shitty beaters. Let's cut all these. <laughs> Sorry, you're not allowed to 60 cards. So well, let's cut as many of the bad cards as we can. Oh, wait, these Tomics. These Tomics suck. Get out of my deck, Tomic. All right, that's pretty clean. I dig this. I think Deafening Silence, at least on the play, is actually like a pretty reasonable card because it bridges you into your, like, your two-drop hate a lot more nicely. Uh, I mean, I'm going to keep this hand and like hope we don't die, but we're probably going to die. Please see DNT someone blackmail me now. Playing, I'm switching out between Bomberman and DNT up until Eternal Weekend now. I guess I shouldn't have six. Gotta make them think I have surgical so they don't kill me this turn. But they kept seven, which probably means we're dead. Never mind. It means that they can blow up a rest in peace, maybe? Do you own Shiny Bomberman so you can audible plasm in it? I do not own Shiny Bomberman. I'm not going to foil it. Because there are, like, 12 cards you can't foil. I think we're just slamming recipes here. We just die to a tomb otherwise. We don't want to get, like, randomly thought seized, too, if we, like, try to play around it by playing, like, Thali or some bullshit. How's the Prince been? It's been... Dece? Oh yeah, I guess yes, you can own foil CDs. I always forget that. The low, low price of $80,000 a place at. <laughs> hey! The... Oh, Reverend Silence. Ooh, hopefully we're not dead. We're probably dead. Uh, the Legacy Premier League... Coming in with the raid. Appreciate it. How's everybody doing? Can Legacy Elves be all foiled out? Nah. Because any, any deck that has duels can't be all foiled out. Wow, they just don't have anything. I guess we just play Thalia, but they have a ton of mana. But, like, do we have a path they don't know about? But maybe we actually revoke Grizzlebrand here, since we can beat any, like, singular threat. And they already have a bunch of mana, so our Thalia is not really important. Like, the one thing that we're just beefing it to is Grizzlebrand, so I'm kind of into that. They don't know about this path. Well, I guess mean, they don't know about any of my cards. They haven't thought these means. I just always assume we get thought Grizzle Brand. The only legacy deck's gonna be fully foiled out, like burn death and taxes. Um Name Disciple Grizzlebrand. I think it's probably pretty close. It's hard, yeah. It's any any deck with duels can't. I think, like, a red prison might be able to, technically, if you count the City of Traitors. What hand did they keep? They're just not doing anything. They want to play Thalia now. Attack you. Tax, tax myself out of these paths. Really? Goblins would only be able to if you stick them on a red. Which is, like, probably the suboptimal. Uh, 
could probably just wasteland and just get in. Mono Black Goblins. Yeah, I didn't, there was a Mono Black Goblins deck. What was it called? Bog Boys or whatever? Pow. I guess I'm just gonna scratch you with this Prince. And some graveyard hate. What motivated you to run two problems? Is there two problems 60? I hope not. I kind of want these cards, but I also kind of don't. Deck list. Did I edit you to have two problems in the 60? Because that's super wrong. Oh shit, there is. Whoops. Oh, whoops. I did. I put hit two on prelate, not a. Uh, Recruiter of the Guard. They're right next to each other on the list. I see my error. Alright, deck list has been updated. Um, what am I doing with these? kind of want to draw them. Important Wasteland seem to use, but they're also just not fetching here. Probably start playing around like a massacre at some point. Thrall, thanks for the follow. Appreciate the sport. Got a lot of lands over there, opponent. My opponent's cast a reverent silence and passed the turn for like five turns here. Like, what do they keep? They just have no, like, do they have just, like, fatty plus reanimate spell in hand and just, like, we're hoping to, like, find a Faithless Looting Urn in Tomb? Yeah, luckily they are dead before the discard a hand size here. Wasteland on the top of the deck looks silly. Unmet. All right. Wow, their hand is serenity, serenity, reverence, silence, huh? Well, they're gonna make a grizzle brand, and then it's gonna get path, and they're gonna be real bummed. They're actually just gonna be dead. We can get fancy path one of our other things and just kill it. Yeah, really does not want to lose the rest of these. I guess they're just like super fucking dead to surgical extraction. Jeez. Serenity and Reverend Silence. Christ. Target your Grizzle Brand. Tech all Pat Self. The sick the sick flips line. Yeah. Alright, well plan worked out. Yeah, so I get they kept like a bunch of ways to kill recipes plus grizzle brand plus reanimate and they were just if they hit any discard spell they can just target themselves or any entomb or faithless looting i assume the dog is making too much noise bring the, please bring the cats back lily is making a lot of noise she's trapped herself underneath a desk Man, these definitely sounds look a lot worse when my opponent has a bunch of reverent, reverent silences to counter my deafening silence. DNT play, can't believe DNT plays Chalice all the one drops. I mean, you play in the sideboard specifically for matchups where your one drops don't really matter. Although in this matchup, your one drops do matter, but you play it on zero pretty often. You play it in matchups where your one drops usually don't matter, or matchups where like the game, like the first two turns of the game are the most pivotal ones. Uh, I don't think I can keep this hand. My opponent, mold the six. But I also think surgical is better than rest in peace. Given, uh, 
I think it says silence. Something about silence in these halls. Don't I don't think this hand is an easy keep by any stretch. Yes, I see her. Please don't do that. She wants pets. She can have pets. Chalice on zero beats all the free spell. Yeah, big brain. I might keep this hand on the play. Chalice on zero into vile. I mean, probably not. Uh, definitely not keeping this on six. Definitely more likely to win if we just find a five that has a surgical extraction. Maybe my opponent will mold a five. Didn't you win on three before? Maybe? I don't remember. Oh, yeah. I went on, like, three or... It was on either three or four at EB Niagara Falls. That was a really sweet game, though. <laughs> they molded to five as well. All right. We probably keep this. Caracas and turn two rest in peace. Ship the Jailer and one of the Givers. Relic Warrior can try to answer an animate dead. They're on five, so... They need a fair bit to smush me. Although Ranimator can easily smush you on a five. But like I don't think we're going to four. Yeah, opponent kept five. We will keep five as well. Please don't smush me. Oh god, they're smushing me. Maybe they have reanimate and they don't get to draw 14 cards. Ah, nope, they just have the zoom. Cool. Unlucky. They're on the 500. No, I run judge ports. I have all the cards in death and taxes are pro mode. Unmask pitching animate dead. You got it. I have this Krakus. Please don't make anything else scary this turn, because I can't beat it. Please draw 14 garbage cards. Since <laughs> you've had the never made a promo crusader. I know, right? What a shame. If someone were to play that one instead. My mantra of this matchup has always been lose game one, win game two, and pray game three. And you know, sometimes your prank doesn't work. Never like super upset to lose these ones. <laughs> Got a Krakus, we'll be fine. Yeah, they definitely won't make anything scary. Not even worried. Not even worried about it. Definitely not worried about it. Oh, they have the archetype. Super not worried about it. Don't worry. Don't worry, chat. Who's panicking? Are you now? We're just like stone dead. Take twelve. Next turn, play the land drop. Animate to hit the archetype. They also like just draw seven more cards. Thought sees my relic order. Nothing bad. Oh man, we got him with the chalice. Alright, we're good. Oh yeah, people have been really hyped about playing Miracles of Sanctuary. We could play turn one mom and a chalice on zero. How could we lose? I suppose we're technically at one there, right? If they drew like 14 straight blanks, we take 12, go to eight, right? Wait, Grizzly Bite's at eight, eight, right? They hit seven, wait. No, Grizzly Bite's eight mana, it's a seven, seven. Yeah, it's because it hits for 21. So we take 12 on board uh, with a giver in play, untap, play, oh, Play, yeah, play the uh, Relic Ward. Relic Ward the anime dead off of the thing. Get hit again. Go to one. So yeah, they just need to draw like 
21 blanks in a row to, 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 for us not to die there. This hand sucks. Uh, this hand's much better. I think we're going to ship the second giver. Yes, the top 21 cards of their deck are just every single land and ritual. Draw the serenities and the reference silences too, that's fine. Um. All right, what are we up against here? It's always a welcome draw. Your two givers is a combination indeed. Wow. Force of will the giver. Deal. Pitching spell pierce. So like just like just Grixis pile, four color pile, I guess. Rug Delver. Does Grixis pile play spell pierce? No, right? Because they like thought seasons and shit. Yeah, this is just, I mean, this is just definitely Red Delver now. Um, three cards in hand. A little bit concerned about Wasteland. We can't really play around days. Just wondering if I should fire off Stoneforge or Plow here. <sighs> Decibolio. Decib Decib Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Appreciate the support. Not super into jamming Not the really. Thalia here because we want to be casting our plows. Lily. Three cards in hand. Give her, yeah, Force on Giver means that we don't really have three action cards, right? I think it is Stoneforge. Like, if we have a third land, I think it's plow. Because we can, like, play just play around days. Stuff like that. Although they probably would have dazed my Giver instead of forcing it, right? Kind of want to get Batter Skull. We got a lot of time. Sort of like when we're so man choked. Lantina is bad for us. I mean, Lan yeah, Lantina is pretty bad for us regardless. Batter Skulls are best option here. It's like all of our other choices kind of suck. Like, I think it's between Batter Skull and Jitae there because Jitae is castable. I don't think it's like super castable though. Also, just takes forever to get online. If we draw lands, we can just wreck them anyway. Yeah, this fits, this screams, I don't have a bolt. And they shuffled the ponder, so they still don't have the bolt. Uh oh. This is the other thing I didn't want to happen. This is more beatable. Because we can just draw land, or we can just play the Tarmog Wave. Oh, Delver too. Or draw land. Nope. Uh, yeah, we'll plow now. Because of Spell Pierce. Um, they shuffled on the Ponder. I value taking one damage over dealing one damage. So we won't attack on the off chance the Delver doesn't flip. Nice. Yeah, it always sucks when you get, like, hoisted by Wasteland when you're a mono-white deck. Oh, that's certainly horrifying. Hopefully we draw a basic planes. But this Batter School's still very much, very much alive. Wow, maybe they... I wonder if they should have attacked with their Delver. That would have been sick. Sick bait. Well, that's horrifying. shit. Now what do we do? I guess we just they spend all their they spend their whole turn leveling up this Hex Drinker we can just like plow it or like Batter Skull block it or something. I think we can just land go. We're just giving them more and more time to find the bolt to kill my Stoneforge Mystic. Unfortunately Charming Prince does not flicker my Batter Skull. It 
Solve the puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> Don't cast Thalia. <laughs> Big brain play for them. Just like, don't reveal. Okay, so it's a force so they can't cast it anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's like, don't, like, have a stifle on the top and like, don't flip your Delver. It would be like the, the galaxy brain play. I think we're plowing this Hex Drinker. Because she's the, the I mean, if they don't attack, we just plow the Hex Drinker. We untap and then we make the Batter Skull, right? We're just not making the batter skull this turn. We're just going to kill the hex drinker. Yeah, we can just plow in response to the level ups. What level is the hex drinker currently? One or zero? How does this work? Zero. Oh, not killing that. We know they're all hands, so I guess it doesn't really matter when we do this. This is only the sorcery, right? Yeah. Kapow. Force of Will Delta in hand. Hard cast a Force next turn. I dig this Tomek, but we definitely just want to get this Batter Skull going. They'll level themselves and not pump it. That was my hope. They didn't for no reason. And then we could just put in the Batter Skull, but... I guess I'm supposed to put in this Batter Skull Sorcerer Speed so we don't just get hoisted by Stifle for no reason. I mean, they missed on the bull. We saw that they flipped force. They know we know their only card are in hand are force and delta. Yeah, I guess there's no reason not to activate right now. Yeah, I don't want to get just wrecked by stifle for no reason. Well, now our only real concern is if this if they can somehow get this Ren six to ult. Then Rug Ditch Stifle. A lot of the Rug decks in the team tournament last week were the Stifle variants. I know Daryl Ayers wrote an article on it. They're on like Stifles and Hooting Mandrels. Was it in Philly? I forget. I don't know. I don't keep up with these things. Cards in hand are unknown, a delta, and force. So they can leave up a force will if they want. In which case we just like don't cast any spells. I wonder if I just toss my Stoneforge Mystic in the garbage can to ensure that this Ren 6 doesn't get to ult. Oh, never mind, they're just attacking. Unless they drew, like, Tarmogoyf, this seems exceptionally aggressive. Like, we have a German play. The Ren 6 is, like, this, this, this Encyclopedia enemy is not going to win the game. Now we're just going to send both of the Ren 6. Probably cast a spell so they can't, can't counter something else. Yeah, I'm going to cast a bait spell. Or not a bait spell. I'm just going to cast a spell out of the Force of Will. So they'll almost guarantee counter basically anything I play. I'll play a two drop. So if we draw a land, we can double spell. I wonder if we just play this Thalia. Thalia just doesn't matter. If they down tick, they just, the Ren dies. So sure. If they force it, sure. I think I like all my other two drops more than this Thalia. Go Thalia, to your inevitable demise. Yeah, sure, they can force a will up. 
could not care less when my opponent has six lands and we have two. Where you go for your Del Renews, NBC, or ABC. <laughs> that's, that's good. Well, they have a Brainstorm, but they need a lot. I guess they just need, like, True Name is the big thing. True Name would definitely be a backbreaker here. We like Charming Prince Flicker our Stone Forge. The Ren and Six has been dealt with enough. So we like Charming Prince the Stone Forge to go find uh, Fire Nice. And then they're just dead. Yeah, ABC would be all bad cards. To mirror NBC being no bad cards. Brainstorm makes me think that they did not, in fact, find a Trinity Nemesis. Ah, uh, yeah, Hex Trigger would be kind of an issue as well. Hex Trigger less so because it would be bad at blocking this turn at least. They could pump it up to a 4-4. Four, four. True name would definitely be a thorn. Yeah. I think we might be able to beat Hexdrinker. Although Hexdrinker might just be able to one like one two punch us. Like just get up to a six six and just claw us over two turns. Cause we don't really have a lot of time. True name definitely gives us more time to like charming Prince or Stone Forge to go get fire nice. Yeah. True name would be a little bit of I'm not sure it should be harder to beat. Maybe they'll just have neither. I don't want to have to deal with that problem. Oh, we're gonna bolt the germ. I dig it. We're at eleven. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Abort mission. Things things are suddenly looking a lot worse. Hmm. Hmm. I think we want Tomic to stem the bleeding, but Tomic's like the only thing that we can't like double spell or anything. Yeah, this Charming Prince was a Flicker Wisp. Is this fine? This is, I would say, slightly less than fine. We don't know what the top card of their deck is. But I imagine they're shuffling it away. Um, our options are Charming Principles Giver or Tomic. Principles Giver is decent, but if we Principles Giver, we're... Blinking the Stone Forge, right? To go get sort of Fire and Ice. And then we get attacks down to five. But then we have to play the Tomic Dot Die, the Insect Liberation, and then we get attacked down to the, the True Name to two. So that's not good, right? We get Charming Prince to gain three life and play the Giver, but the Tomic also gains us three life. It's like every turn that we survive, right? I think the play might be Tomic. Tomic to block the the Delver. We to eight, and then we can like give her plus Charming Prince. Start trying to stabilize that way. Topic land, you basically yeah, that's true. Gta would probably be better than Sword here because they're probably attacking with True Name every turn. I think I want to play Tomic here. I don't like going to five. Hmm. Don't look tough though. Not sure. Sucks that we can't play Tomic and Giver here. That'd be great. Hopefully they don't 
comes across something big and scary. I just think it wasteland my Rashad and Port. I didn't think about that. I mean, they can't tell if they trade Tomek with Apparition. They almost assuredly will, too. But we used to like Charming Prince. Well, now they, now they can waste, because we're forced. The block's forced there. Alright, draw the land anyway. That's fine. So. Charming Prince, the Stoneforge, play Giver, get Gta, go down to five. Uh, cast the Gta, go down to two. All right, we can we can get the Gta online before, so I think Flickering Stoneforge is better than gaining three life here because we're just not racing. There's so much life because uh, I probably should have attacked first, but again, they're at like a million life. Yeah, I'm okay walking into days here. Because we want to be like casting the GTA and stuff. So if we miss on the land, we can still potentially live if they don't have like Bolt. That means we don't die here. Why'd you cast us to bring in with Stoneforge? So I gotta attack with both things. I guess that dies to like Force of Will though. To lose a second. Oh, they just have second bolt too. Or third bolt, sure. Man, we tried so hard. I will say this matchup is one of the reasons that I had been playing less at D&T lately. I think the matchup's still fine. We've beaten it once today. Like, that matchup was very close. The games are just, like, phenomenally less interesting to me. Like, the games you lose feel, like, super samey. Like, all the games you lose to, you're, like, just getting flattened by Ren and Six, or, like, you're dying to a true name that you can't answer because you, your deck doesn't have answers to it. It's, like, very uninteresting. I don't enjoy the matchup anymore. Is this what I did last time? I think so. I think we ended up one Prelo, one Crusader. I'll keep this. Barris was a little awkward, but two plows is great. And Barris was less awkward because we have the Stoneforge in our hand. I'm probably casting an instep plow here into a daze. We're so mana light. Ponder? Nice. Love that turn one ponder hands. Hmm. I wonder if I want to play this Tomic into a daze. Versus just one mill slamming Stoneforge. 
Some words are really good if they don't have days. If we grab GTA 2, they might just like not bolt it and just get them. Tomic isn't really good against a lot here. Oh, nice. Just resolved. Do I get GTA? Do I get Sword? Not really super keen on beating a true game right now, besides our single flyer. So sword's not unreasonable. You have two plows to deal with like Tarmogoyfs and stuff, yeah, we think we trap sword. Cast a Tarmogoyf. Oh, hell yeah. I just don't have anything. Well, we have so many source of shares. I guess I'm just passing the turn here. It's gonna, like, turn three, turn enemy. I have nothing. All right, my thing has to be getting shattered, right? They've gone land go for 700 turns. So which one would I rather get shattered? The battery floor or the sword? I kind of want the battery floor more than the sword. They're not going to equip here. Because they like 100% have the. Ooh. Um, oh. <laughs> Alright, she's still asleep. Oh no, she's, she's awake now. Wasteland their Volk here. It doesn't help us like equip and attack them or anything, but although if they have Ancient Grudge, then we can still pop their red source at least. Burn through both halves of the Ancient Grudge. We could just cast Prelate on like one, but that turns off our triple plows. Maybe they're sitting on Stifle. I would be surprised. Wow, they are just going to stifle that wasteland. All right, cool. She's not going to equip. We're just going to put in the batter skull. Yep. Sure, we have 9,000 sources of bio shares to kill your Tarmac Wave opponent. Please counter this. Please force a will this. Oh, boo. Nice. Do we probe on two just to beat the other half of this ancient grudge? Probably on one still just seems so much better. X equals Ren. Could put the pro putting the pro on Ren also it doesn't suck, although they haven't played a Ren. They haven't bolted any of my ship, that's because they haven't had to yet. I feel like the answer is still probably on one. Two is not an unreasonable number. The fact that we have double plow makes me kind of want to a little bit more. Like if they bolt the prelate and then ancient grudge my batter skull, that's, that's the life. Oh, sure, that's fine.
Wasteland as Valk again. Man, what if they just have the second Stifle? We should get wrecked. I kind of want to get up to five lands so we can just Batter Skull and pick it up off Ancient Grudge. We could just like plow Platomic. We don't have to plow until they're upkeep though. So step one plow. Step two Tome, step three wasteland. I guess step three attack them. Do you upkeep this time like someone who cares for a prey run stifle? Never respect the stifle. So I kind of wanted to hit the red mana to see what they would do that turn. Stone Force. They don't know about this Batter Skull, to be fair. Brainstorm. Can we find, like, Rest in Peace? Yeah, wasting well, them in my turn, that, that turn would just, like, serve no purpose, right? Because we weren't trying to, like, goad them into anything. Uh, well, we'll cast this Giver of Runes. I think we're just attacking with the Stone Forge. We're definitely not just putting in the Batter Skull because they just have this Ancient Grudge. There's no reason to just fire into the Void. So I'd rather just keep hitting them. Like, if they kill my Stone Forge down the line, like, sure, we'll eventually have to cast the Batter Skull for five, but it's looking like a game where we will hit five mana at some point. Opponent's gonna hit five mana at some point, for sure. Squire Stompy. Yeah, let's beat them the heck down. Let's get them. Man, we're gonna play this Thalia and they're gonna like cast Hex Drinker. You can get so wrecked. What is this? Dismember? Yeah. Dismember my giver. That's so rude. Could be 11 if we attack the giver. A port. That's just getting wastelanded. That sucks. One day, we will be able to have our batter school have text. Today is not that day. Think about wastelanding? No. Interesting. Oh man, maybe they'll grudge this file on turn 10. Never know. Oh god, where are we getting wrecked by? Is this just lightning bolt? Yeah, this is just lightning bolt. Alright, Stone Forge. Yeah, your work cut out for you. Yeah, they only have, like, probably one snake in the deck, right? So I'm not, like, too terribly concerned about it. I don't know if I actually want to be pointing green. I don't think it really matters.
<sighs> it's been a weird ass game. Everyone has played like one creature. Did they played two? Yeah, we played two creatures, okay. If they continue not wasteland me, oh well, that was short lived. Nice, we did it. We got him, chat. We waited him out. Perseverance wins the day. They grudged a completely worthless Aether Vial. It could be bait. They have the second grudge. Hmm, I, uh, whoops, I forgot to attack. My mistake. Sorry for, like, putting it in on an upkeep or whatever, play around, like, top deck stifle or something. I don't really care if they're burning resources to stifle my germ token. Quite honestly. Nice, alright. Seems pretty good now. We can beat the Oko now, because we can pick up the Batter Skull. I wonder if I was supposed to actually not... No, we're porting. Think about not attacking with Stoneforge. So we can, like, pick up and put back in Batter Skull, but it doesn't matter. You got it. Punch you. Two life, two removal spells in hand. Pretty good. They draw like true name to survive here. But then we just put them to one. Alright, that was a game. That was a very unusual game. Perseverance, we wore them down. They didn't know about the Battle Skull for like 10 turns, and they're like, all right, sure, we'll grudge their Aether Vial. They don't have anything else. And then, pow. Batter Skull out of nowhere. Got them good. Wait, then, what, when, when did the Tomic even enter play? It just got, like, got bolted, right? We played it and then it died. Sand is a uh, grudging keep. Sort of plash shares are generally okay, but sometimes you'll just die to run in sixes and true name nemes nemeses. Please cast creatures so I can kill them. Yes. Deal. Alright, chat. Quick poll. Who's in for wastelanding my opponent on turn one? Alright, poll's over. I'm gonna do it. Opponent is not the second land. We'll be fine. Wow, wrecked. <laughs> Got him good. We got him good, chat. Thought I was in their upkeep. Play around, like, Force of Negation. Please, Force of Willis. Meanwhile, we also just have two Rashad and Ports in our hand. <laughs> um, you play Giver or GT here? Your official waste of the draw membership. <laughs> hey, sometimes you just gotta do it. When your hand is just a bunch of lanes and removal spells, like, I'm into it. Sometimes they just die when you do it. Yeah, I think if the answer is GT. I mean, the odds that they board in Force of Negation against Death and Taxes are astronomically low, but I just assume that all my opponents are horrible. Force Pitching Delver. Alright, you got it, boss. Aw, wow. 
What's it like? What's it like, opponent? Come on, shuffle on this ponder. Shuffle. Shuffle. Nah, oh, they didn't shuffle, dang. Eh, we'll just give her plus four. Ah, never mind. We're gonna waste that then. Wow, how rude opponent. Now you're gonna play a land that I can Rashad and port. How, how dare you? We have five cards in hand. I really don't think we want to flicker Wisp here into like days. We can just hit our land drop and hit them. Say go. Man, how good would it be if we just mind censored them on the fetch? Man, that'd be, that would be amazing. This is an odd time to go for this. They just really want to bolt with Giver of Runes. I mean, I even played the Rashadden port, but okay. Maybe they're just gonna like brainstorm their upkeep, try to hit their second land drop. Also, I definitely should have attacked before I played the port to incentivize them to do something like that. Hey, we did it. Hey, we did it. Stop hitting land drops, opponent. Said stop. Now we can actually like port the Misty and then port the, the fetched land too if they don't fetch. I will port you. We draw our fourth wasteland. Take them off of all their red sources. Oh wow. What's it like, opponent? Oh no. Mana Screw does beat Mana Flood given enough time, and we are giving them a lot of time. Luckily we can basically take them off of red for the rest of the game. As long as we port them. As long as we have one port, they can't cast like Ren and Six ever. Because they are they're down two Vaults and this is their third one. Thought Flood always beats Screw. No, Screw beats Flood. If the mana screw like if you get enough shrouds out of it before you die. Bolt my flicker wisp. Float a red mana. Oh no, they're both in wisp. Sure. Dead. So let's play with days. That's true. All right. Yeah, two vaults in their yard. The 
this is the last one. Yeah, but if they like days to pick up their bulk, they they have an un like an unportable red source at some point during this game. All right. <laughs> Hey, they ran out of bolts. We did it. What's in their hand? They have five cards in hand. They don't cast the spell there. All right, go get them, giver. Let's beat down a clock. I guess if they cast a spell, that means they're going down to one mana after that, because we have the double port. At least if they get to keep up two mana for an extended period of time here. They're trying to find, like, third mana source to play, to play True Name, I imagine. But I also have to keep, like, I can't double port, like, the Scalding turns and stuff to try to get them to fetch with them, because I just absolutely cannot let them cast Ren 6. I guess I could port the Scalding Tarn, like, first, and if they don't fetch with it, then we ported it, and then we port the Volk, and if they do fetch with it, then we just port the Volk. It's probably actually better, considering porting these fetch line and stuff is doing nothing for me. So it's probably supposed to be porting a fetch in their upkeep, and then the Volk. Nice, the perfect draw. What's better than the turn 10 Aether Vial? The turn 12 Aether Vial. Maybe I wasn't supposed to put this on the stack, because now they can like daze it. Just to get their vault back. And they get to like ran six wreck me. Oh nice, they just forced a pitching spell snare. Why would you force a will pitching spell snare on a turn 12 Aether Vial? <laughs> Whatever. Alright. Start enacting the new game plan. Yes. So we got them to crack the, the land now. So now we can start just porting two actual mana sources next turn. Should have done this like two or three turns ago. Oh, fuck. Did not play, did not anticipate that one. I guess they could have always done that though, right? Now they stifle port fool. <laughs> Was not playing around, stifle your Rashad in port. Fetch my last trop, play run in six. They were waiting for me to fuck up. I think this probably was actually still the correct play like 900 turns ago. And now they're just gonna like. Ren 6, put me in the dirt. Can we draw, like, rest in peace? They're at 8, huh? Let's just draw, like... Anything. They cast 3 lightning bolts. Just draw, like, an equipment. Thalia, oh, yeah, that's not very good. Can I play this Thalia? Probably. I'm putting their drops now. Oh, Th Thalia's fine if Keeper's protecting it. Well, they have the fourth bolt. Also trying to play fast here because we have four minutes left on the clock. What's well, top deck? Bat or skull? Bat or skull would be a good one. You consider drawing better cards. I told you, screw beats flood. 
Nice. The perfect drawer. Now we just have to keep casting these to try to to, uh, to just, oh, oh, just play into the run until we they run out of pings. So we get the next one to stick. Yep, so now if we draw like a flicker wisp or something. No! <laughs> the ultimate punish. Probably can't even have six because I need to cast this plow too. Like plus play Charmagoy for whatever. Wait, why did you get a fetch back? You have no fetchables. Why don't they get back their other trop? Whatever. Draw, nope. Did not draw rest in pieces for the punish. Probably getting force of world. Gotta get batter skull. Um, I think we're just leaving it in my hand, honestly. We have enough mana to play and pick it up, but not the red days. So if they have days plus grudge, although if they have grudge, yeah, I think we're just not gonna cast it this turn. Think fast. Sure. So it's not time to brainstorm your upkeep. I think you're pretty solid on mana, opponent. Hopefully you don't find something that I can't plow. And the polluted delta literally just shuffles from the brainstorm. Rough. Sure. like we might actually be able to time them out unless they find like another Tarmogoyf. Another tree might be able to kill me in six turns in two minutes. Draw with Council's Judgment here. Just get him. Right on time, rest in peace. Oh, they have another force. Pitching days, sure. Playing fast here. I still have faith. We can draw like Council's Judgment into Council's Judgment. We broke through three, all four of their Force of Wills, so they would resolve. Charming Prince. I'm probably supposed to scry. for this true name bottom and bottom this plow isn't doing jack
Oh, wait, they're not picking? Maybe they have like a third Ren in hand, so they are putting me to dead. Yeah, I feel like they could have just... I guess, no, they couldn't plus to ult. They might just have third Ren here, so they put me to lethal anyway, but like, why pick up the lane when they could have just down picked again? Yeah, this is ping, play Ren 6 ping. Oh, nope. Alright. Wrath of God, dang. I guess it had to be one sided Wrath of God. You draw like winds of abandon, get them. Yeah, those draws were very cold. Some extremely cold drawing. Yeah, like I said, Scrooby Flood. Because your opponent just like, eventually there's like, you kind of reach an equalizing point where your opponent can like play magic and they have a bunch of gas in their hand and you just have a bunch of lands. All it took was me drawing three quarters of the lands in my deck. Exactly. Final round here. Oh, that one's Dece. I'll keep. Uh, Hoylius, thanks for the follow. Appreciate the support. Think you still want to play around Stifle? Probably not. They had, like, a bunch of dazes in hand that they'd, like, slowly pitch to those forces, right? So they would have, like, got that run and six online. Oh, yeah. I think, like, I shouldn't have been playing around this. I was accidentally playing around the Stifle. I think I should have been doing the other play sooner. Anyway, yeah, keep. Make them date their own stuff. What, just never cast a spell? Like, they will eventually kill me. <laughs> I have to put a spell on the stack at some point. Oh boy, a Mox Diamond deck. Dryad Arbor. Caracas. What is this? Is just, like, four-color loam? Depth stack don't play Dryad Arbor, right? Turn one library is always scary though. Yeah, Dryad Arbor seems pretty bad in depth. Maverick Depths. I don't think Maverick... Oh, uh, yeah, I guess Maverick Depths would probably play it, right? Because they have the, the green subs in this package. The green-white Depths deck. More diamonds. Revoke all their diamonds. Wait, Riftstone Portal? That doesn't seem like a... I mean, I guess it is. This card does not... I guess it, like, combos with your Dark Depths. Seems, like, not very good, though. This is definitely just green-white Depths. Uh, we are dead to crop rotation. But I also just straight up can't beat it. So... I think I'm just gonna play... Revoker on, like, Mox Diamond? Yeah, that seems a little unnecessary. How do you, it seems really hard to get in the graveyard, too. Like, exactly Mox Diamond or crop rotation it away. 
just seems like a bad way of playing like Herb Morgan your green white deck. Prince beats it. <laughs> Game through the life. Prince does let us live through a merit leash. I guess, I guess Reclaimer. Okay, yeah, Reclaimer is a thing. It's like not horrible. It's like pretty bad though. I feel like it's actively worse than Flagstones of Trocare. Or Rogue Giver. Rogue Giver is another option. Rogue Mox is, like, also... Rogue Giver of Rogue Mox. The issue is that, like... Eventually they're gonna bear at least me. <sighs> and we have no way of stopping that. But, like, if we do have a way of stopping that, none of the no ways that we can stop that, like, beat this Giver of Burns. So, like, maybe it's Rogue Giver. We, we put them to two lands. We put them to two mana sources, essentially. Which puts them a, little, a ways away from actually comboing me, though. We can also flicker it over to Giver later. See if you die when you cast Revoker. <laughs> Mox Diamond. All right, we didn't die, so that means we need to live a couple more turns. Maybe we draw like Caracas or something. We can just Charming Prince or Revoker over to the Giver of Runes. Oh, well, we're dead now. Because it's time to... Charming Prince to gain three life. Caracas off the top? Because we just draw a plow, too, because we, we could flicker over. Hey, Tomek, right on time. I appreciate you being here, Tomek, buddy. Well... I will choose to gain three life with Charming Prince. But then we just, like, can't beat this giver, right? No matter what we draw. <sighs> I guess we draw, like, Plow, plus have the Tomic as a blocker. I will elect to gain three life. Really, you can't flick your opponent's stuff. I guess that wouldn't matter. Oh yeah, plus Caracas. We can actually pick up our own thing. Well, no, because they could like, just pro. Oh yeah, and then if they pro white would hit me, then we just Caracas theirs. That's true. Oh yeah, they could actually just Caracas my Tomic. I will gain three life. That's why we revoke the card that kills us. I don't know if that's true. Like some yes, you will die to some draws if you're a Mox Diamond, but if you stifle a bunch of their mana development, it also can buy you a lot more time. There wasn't a guarantee there were just like adepts in their top three cards there. Also, if we had drawn a Krakus or a Plat, we still could have just flickered the Charming Prince over to the Giver anyway and killed them. They have their Caracas. Unless they fuck up somehow. I didn't even play the right land. I fucked up. Oh well, whatever. We did. chance to, to fuck up, but they didn't, never did. You tried, Charming Prince. You were significantly worse than Flicker Wisp, though. I 
think I still like Surgical in these these matchups. They don't really have like a super good backup plan. They like big knights. It, does knight plus reclaimer mean you actually want like resto piece in this matchup? God. I haven't really played a lot against a lot of green white depths. A relic order to hit like what mox diamond and some amount of libraries. Ugh. Seems bad. They might have like needles and stuff in the yard uh, in the sideboard, yeah. Consideration look okay. I don't think we really need rip. We have a pile of removal spells. I'll keep this. I'm happy with this. Got a bunch of removal spells. Got a decent curve. Have a Caracas. This is in fact a hand of magic cards. <sighs> we are hoping we don't get wastelanded into next week. got what you got opponent wow that was a turn all right what are we revoking kind of at a loss here i feel like anything that we want to revoke they would have played on turn one right <sighs> box i been giver of runes elvish reclaimer Knight of the Reliquary seems like a bad name. I would pour it, but they just have a fetch up too. Revoke Ren and Six. <laughs> just fuck off Ren and Six. I don't even I don't even want to deal with you in this game. This game where you're not even in my opponent's deck. Just fuck all the way off. Naya Depths. What actually though, what do we want to do here? Kind of at a loss. Um all the rover targets seem like they suck a lot. We have a giver in play. Maybe Mox Diamond. That they probably would have played out here to cast a spell. Path Giver for Mana Ramp. Thanks, chat. I just name like Coder, but we're just gonna kill the Coder when they play it. I'll just name their Wooded Foothills when they don't crack it in response. Yeah, Wooded Foothills is. Like, maybe they play like. They can't play five fetches though. They have so many lands and so many like non fetchables, right? And they probably have. Basic planes? Did we see basic planes? I forget. Um, I had an idea of what I was gonna name. I think it was just Mox Diamond. Yeah, just name Mox Diamond. Maybe Rover just sucks in this matchup. No, it's like good. It's good when they have Giver and you don't. But considering our hand, we're not very scared of their Givers, and we don't want to turn off our own. So we're just, we obviously don't want to name it. There's a world where they have a Mox Diamond and just didn't want to play it out. Because they just wanted, like, surprise turn two night or whatever. Do I have to judgment this? I probably do. Six cards in hand. 
get so many. Yeah, they straight up have basic planes in their deck. Yes, time for a very fair vote. You get to vote for what you want, I get to vote for what I want. It's a perfectly fair opponent. Democracy is spoken and you don't deserve a library. Just like the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Coder. Coder. Path that maybe we're supposed to be just tagging this giver because this rover doesn't fucking matter. I'm probably supposed to be doing that. Although now my mirror crusader matters, so now I'm not supposed to be attacking. So many basics. Opponent still has so many so yeah. Opponent still has so many cards in hand. I guess that's because we have a bunch of creatures in play. Uh, it's probably supposed to be an Elvish Reclaimer, wasn't I? So just Mox Diamond. I'm gonna assume they're tanking for 20 minutes. And then just like name something useless. Resolves? Gain 4 life? You get a 4 3? Sure. I'm just gonna flip rest my Revoker over to Reclaimer here. Oh, nice. Second flicker was. Punch you with the big thing. Flicker the Revoker over to Elvish Reclaimer. Night of the Reliquary. And we just have lethal before that gets active, right? Attack number seven, we can wisp our wisp, wisp out the knight. Two cards in hand, yeah, I'll take three here. Not worth activating the giver. And we have lethal tied up here. Sure, you got me. A GTA. Not quite the same. Hey, Static. Thanks for the 15 month resub. Getting up there, glass stumbled on your stream all those months ago. Indeed. Thanks for the continued support. Always appreciated. Flicker Wisp, our Flicker Wisp. We have like a plow here to try to stumble that plan. Goodbye, Night of the Reliquary. We have a lot of lethal bodies. They have no part of the combo. They've just played like three spells, four spells, just been a bad Maverick deck. We take those, certainly. Um, we're just running it back. 
It seemed like an opportunity to pay a 4D ticket and clear the Reclaimer. Didn't look like they could have killed you if you did that. Eh, probably not. But the Reclaimer also wasn't doing anything. The Reclaimer was a 3-4. I just wanted to make sure the Knight couldn't just, like, go tutor up some bullshit. Tutor up, like, a fucking glacial chasm. Just, like, savagely wreck me. Yeah. I mean, we were threatening lethal. Like, there were six life. We had two flyers and one unblockable uh, double striker. They could, I get may Like, we still, still could have killed them through maze at that board state. But, like, you, you never know. Don't want to die like, some random bullshit. Rather just try to slam the door on their various outs. Put a bunch of lethal, lethal things in play. Oh yeah, Giver also beats Maze. Uh, I was about to snap off this hand, but I also assumed that I had a white source. This hand sucks. I also hate this hand, but on a six on the draw, we'll keep. Got a vial and a Giver and a Crocus and a Port. Decent hand. Definitely not... Exciting. Tough draw gas. Yeah, not at the rate we've been drawing today. Burned all my luck at the, the bottom man stream on Monday. <laughs> Where we just, like, drew the perfect card we needed for, like, three straight matches. <laughs> what you got, opponent? Mm, it's a good start. Mm, it's a less good start for me. because she's locked out. No, Lily, we're almost done with the stream. Just sleep for another 10 minutes. Any list thing, any learned, anything learned from having a deafening silence deck? Well, we played against Delver three times and Depths. And we played against Red Black Reanimator and we never drew it, so no, absolutely nothing. The Charming Princes have been decidedly medium so far. My very small sample size. As soon as I go in large part, I aggressively test it. I also just wanted to, like, fuck combo decks, right? Combo's the other half of the meta. There's, like, the Ren and Six half, and then there's the half that doesn't care about Ren and Six. Like not unreasonable to, to hedge for a bunch of bullshit on the other half of the meta by playing a bunch of anti combo cards. I think the side were probably like one too many though. Are we porting or are we playing a second vial? I think we're just porting. Play another vial later. Our hand is very slow, so we would like to try to stumble them out of the gates. They're not really like, doing anything threatening. The Avengers as Wisps or Star Avengers. I guess that's true. Prince is never like, oh man, this Prince is so good. There aren't like, really a lot of moments like that. There's, I can't remember what it was, but there was one point where it was, like, objectively, like, wow, this card is, like, heinously worse than Wisp right here. I forget what was happening. But it's, like, straight up. Besides the, it was, it was in a different matchup than this one. Because in game one, it's like, if we had Wisp, we could have won. But it was in, like, one of the Delver matchups, I want to say. Oh, yeah, they, like, Ren Ping and bolted my Batter Skull. And then we had, we just had a fucking uh, Prince in our hand. We couldn't flicker it. Yes, that was it. Our germ died. Well, if you got a stage, you got an Elvis Reclaimer, you can't have a Depths. Safekeeper... Wow. Be fair, we also.
also didn't have third land. We found the third land, I think, like the, the following one. The following turn. Something like that. Tomic? No. More Crusaders, huh? Yeah, there was the scry. The scry was like decent at points, right? We scryed to find like more action to put uh, the GTA on, and like scryed to the fifth land to cast the banner skull and stuff like that. It was pretty nice against Blue Red Delver that one turn where we like had our violin two and we had to like flicker our give her rooms to save it or whatever. Opponent's asking me about Giver of Runes for some other runes. I mean, it makes sense in their deck as Caracas, but people are always curious. Mm, we got plenty of time. I'll answer them. Because another room is not now used in DT. Not currently. Having one toughness is like having a big target on your back. It will certainly depend on the numbers of Ren and Six and Plague Engineer going forward, which uh, doesn't appear to be going down anytime soon. Oftentimes, like, your Mother of Runes is just a lightning rod for a removal spell anyway, which Giver does essentially the same job. Giver is mostly worse when you have nothing besides your Giver in play and you, like, want to block a big thing. Like, there have been plenty of games versus, like, Delver where they just have, like, a big Grimog Angler and you just fog it for three turns while both of you draw blanks. Well, that's horrifying. This is uh, not looking pretty. Tomic would be a good draw. Charming Prince. It does not feel like it does it here. They're at 18, so we can't really, like, double Crusader them to death anytime soon. We can leave the port up here to beat, to stall the depths for one turn, right? Because as soon as they activate the knight, we can um, port the stage in response to that, right? So if they have another land drop, they can just reclaim it in response to that, though, right? Float a mana. They have four mana. They need two. Yeah, if they have another land drop, then that plan doesn't work out. But I think our, my plan is Prince Scry. And leave a port to try to stall uh, Merrily for another turn. suck. The current land comes untapped. Yeah, but um, they just need the dark depths. So it doesn't matter. If they have another land, they can do that because they can use two mana plus the two mana to activate stage. Because 
the Knight of Reliquary activation is free. Oh, okay. Or they just play the depths. Sure. Game Life Hanger for two hits. We don't have Lethal through that, right? Maybe we could have, like, played Double Crusader, hit them for eight, and tried to gain life that way. I kind of don't want them to activate this stage here, so I kind of don't want to port them. I guess there's a chance we could draw an answer to the safekeeper. Then be able to, like, Karakas Kar it or something. Sort of ports them all lines of two hits, yeah. Huh. I'm not supposed to port here. I'm not supposed to port the stage, force the activation, because we draw like Wasteland and survive for a turn, I believe. They activate, we Wasteland, yeah. We draw Wasteland and survive. I don't think I'm supposed to port here. Womp womp. In fact, super dead. Maybe they won't notice. Lily, get out of the trash can. Dang, we've got. We don't even have like the possibility of whisping them. Because they have Coder <coughs> to go get, what's it called? The uh, Sajiri step. We are, in fact, dead. I think we would have been dead regardless, just considering that they. Oh back. I wanted to see what my next draw was. Oh uh, yeah, we were. Oh yeah, no, we were drawing like gar garbage because we didn't start with the, the priest. Not priest, prince. Lily's getting antsy, so I should, I'm going to try to wrap this up quick. And that match, that game took, or that whole league took forever because to the Texas always takes 9,000 years. I'm the only one streaming Legacy online? Come on, guys. Alright, we'll go host Zansay. Playing modern, but he's played he played Death and Taxes that one time before he switched to that Nihilum deck. But anyway. Um So yeah, this is the list. Yeah, we didn't get to play Deafening Silence ever. Charming Prince was, like, pretty medium. I'm going to keep playing it. I think I'm going to keep just, like, running back this list a little bit. Obviously, one league in. Not exactly a lot of testing, but it felt fine. Your, your Delver Magic still felt great. We lost a Delver once, but had some uh, pretty heinous draws at the end there. And then we lost to... What did we lose to? Well, we lost to Red Black, the old coin flip game three. And then we died there to Greenway Depths in just, like... Some some clunky awkward draws. That's life. I do think that these the them that yeah these dozen Texas lists have been getting slowly worse and worse depth matchups and especially green white I think is like just less free. They just have like more shit to interact with yours. But anyway, be jamming this list more. We're gonna be playing a bunch of uh, Bomberman dozen Texas leading up to Eternal Weekend. So. 
you uh, like the legacy content, you want to stick around for uh, future streams, go ahead and hit, hit that follow button. Cost is totally free. Uh, but that's going to be it for us tonight. Thanks, everybody, for coming, hanging out. Thanks to the LPL. Uh, thanks to Julian for coming and hosting. Appreciate it. Go watch the LPL every Wednesday, I believe. It's all on. It's all on Twitter. Go find. Go find the schedule on Twitter. I don't. I don't know it. <laughs> anyway, catch you guys all for the Friday stream. So have a good rest of the week. Until then, later.